Hello, I'm Stephanie Sebbing from Quilt Addicts Anonymous, and today we're talking about sewing machines. I get asked all the time, both in comments on YouTube videos online and also in our shop at Quilt Addicts Anonymous in Rock Island, Illinois, what do I need to look for when I get a new sewing machine? Usually, these questions are coming from two types of people. Uh, people who have maybe bought something at a big box store and are ready to upgrade to something that is a little bit more for someone who wants to be a serious quilter or at least, you know, wants to stop fighting with their machine because it's not as fabulous as it could be. Or they've been sewing for years or maybe they used to sew a long time ago and now they're getting back into it and they have one of those really old machines that you maybe got at Sears or Kenmore or somewhere. It's really heavy, it's metal, and it's hard to lug around places, but also they know there have been a lot of advances in what a sewing machine can do since they bought their machine decades ago to today. So some of those old machines can be really great. If you get them cleaned out and fixed up, they can really run for a long time. The Singer Featherweight is really known well for that. That's a machine where you, if you get it refurbished, it will continue to run for you and do a great job. They really made products to last back then, um, much more so than some of the sewing machines you can get today. Um, but not all of them can be saved like that. So here are the things that you need to look for when you're buying a sewing machine. We're gonna talk about the features that you're gonna want if you wanna be a quilter and you want something that's gonna work for you, uh, price points to look for, and why I always recommend buying from an independent retailer near you, like a quilt shop or a sewing machine repair store. So first, let's talk about the features you would wanna have. I sew on two machines. They're both Baby Locks. Um, I like Baby Locks, they're the first like serious sewing machine I got. I learned to sew on a machine that had been purchased at a big box store when I was a kid, um, probably for not a lot of money. And I had a lot of issues with it. It's a well-known brand, but it's just not what it used to be like back in the day. Um, if you know anything about sewing machines, you probably know what brand I'm talking about, but it's just not a fabulous machine anymore. Um, so, I would have all kinds of issues where I would have to chain piece everything and if I didn't then I would have all kinds of problems where the feed dogs would kind of want to eat my fabric. So I would be like manually turning this dial three times uh, to get that fabric started at the beginning of each chain piece otherwise I would have all kinds of tension, headaches and nightmares because it just wasn't working properly. Um, it just didn't have the things it needed in terms of sewing machine quality to be able to do what I wanted it to do. So when I upgraded to a baby lock, it made a world of difference. I had a lot easier time sewing, even though I already knew what to do with it. Um, I already knew how to use my machine. It just worked a whole lot better because the machine was better quality. So if you find that you're struggling with tension a lot um, and you know you threaded it correctly, you know you're using good quality fabric, but you have a machine that you bought at a big box store, your machine might be the problem. Um, so keep that in mind. I bought a Baby Lock Quilters Choice about eight years ago that is no longer available, but they have similar models. Um, I chose that one because it had a wide throat plate, um, wider than this one here. And it also came with a lot of features like an ex extended base to make this area larger to sew with, um, which is great when you're quilting because the bigger workspace you have, the better. And it had a walking foot already that came with it and it also had a quarter inch foot, an open toe um, applique foot, and also a free motion quilting foot. So it had all the extra things that I would have had to buy separately in that price point. And I believe it was about $1,200 at a sale price to do it at that time, and that was eight years ago. Last summer, I bought the Rachel from Baby Lock. I stuck with Baby Lock because in the eight years I've been sewing with it, the only problems I've ever had were my fault. I had gone too far in between cleanings, it was really gunked up in there, and it just needed to be cleaned out, and then everything worked perfectly again. Um, I got the Rachel because it retails for $7.99, but it was on sale for $4.50, I believe. And they do sales like that all the time. So if you're in the market for a sewing machine, just get on the email newsletter list of whatever place you want to buy it from and wait for that sale. Um, 
because an $800 machine at $450 on sale is very different than a $400 machine that you buy from a big box store. Um, what this machine has that you would want to look for when you're um, considering buying is it has a built-in quarter inch stitch foot that's very important you either need a quarter inch foot or you need a machine that has a stitch that's specifically for that if you're going to use it for quilting um, all math on quilting is based on quarter inch seam so if you don't have a way to do that easily by lining the fabric up at the edge of your presser foot you're going to have a hard time um, sewing. So you either want to buy one or you want to have a machine that has that built in. Mine has a built in. I can also purchase separately a quarter inch foot if I wanted to, um, but it did not come with that. The other thing this machine did not come with is a walking foot. Now that's going to be essential if you're a quilter. Even if you don't ever quilt anything on your home sewing machine, you need it when you bind so that all those three layers go through together. That's something you can purchase separately, which you would want to do at the time that you purchase. Things like open toe applique foot and free motion foot, those things are optional when you get started and you can get them as you need them. So if you have an applique project or a free motion quilting project and the applique um, or the open toe applique foot would be nice for that, then just get it at that time. And same deal with getting your free motion foot. Um, one of the other reasons why I stuck with baby lock is quarter inch stitches can vary a little bit from machine to machine. So what I wanted was a machine to have at home and a machine to have at our quilt shop where if I was working on quilts at two locations, I would just have to bring the fabric back and forth, not have to bring the machine. So my quarter inch stitch is going to be consistent if I sew on this machine or if I sew at the machine at the shop and those pieces are going to still fit together really well. Um, that may not have been the case if I would have gone with another brand. The other good part of it is on um, Baby Lock, and this isn't the case with all uh, machines, uh, retailers, but Baby Lock, all the feet are transferable. So I can use my, um, I didn't have to buy all new walking feet or free motion feet or open toe applique. I can just pop them off for my other machine and put them on this one. So that was a really big selling point. So those are really kind of the big things that you need. You need the quarter inch capability, either with a quarter inch foot or quarter inch stitch that you can set your machine to. Um, you need a walking foot. And you need some sort of throat space here if you're planning on quilting your own quilts at home. Because if you think about it, if you're, even if you're just doing straight line quilting, this is not a whole lot of space to push everything through. You can smush everything up pretty well to get it through there, but it still is gonna be a lot of bulk in here, you know, to get half of your quilt potentially underneath here. So that was one of the reasons why I went up um, when I was first buying eight years ago to the bigger one. Um, sewing machines, like anything, the more you spend, the more features you get. Um, with this $450 one, that I got on, on sale for $450, the Rachel. It was great because it had everything I needed, which was sewing a quarter inch stitch, and that was basically it. That's all I wanted it to do, so a quarter inch stitch. And if that's all you want your sewing machine to do, perfect, this will do that for you. It also has about 50 other built-in stitches, so you can do things like if you wanna sew a garment and you wanna have an overlocking stitch or you wanna do a stretch stitch uh, for knit on it, you can do that. You can do buttonholes on this. You can do a few decorative stitches. So it does a lot more than you would need for just basic quilting, but it definitely has what you would need for it. It also has, and this is really handy, built-in speed controls. So if you're a beginner and when it's going at top speed, that kind of freaks you out a little bit, you can easily turn the speed down. So that's a, a nice thing to have. It's not a must have. Um, this one also has a built-in backup and I can manually set my needle to be down, which is nice when you're sewing because then if you like lift up your presser foot to reposition fabric, you don't have to worry about everything getting messed up and getting all over the place because your needle's down and holding it in place. So those are good extras, but really you need something that will sew a quarter inch seam, has a walking foot, and that's really it, you know, from a machine. And I know that that sounds like a lot of money for something that just does that but the machine will 
works so much better than what you would get at a big box store. Another fun thing to have is if you're going to do any free motion quilting is the ability to raise and lower your feed dogs. That's a fun, that's a good thing to have. A workaround for that is just to set your stitch length to zero, but then you will have a little bit more drag as you're moving the quilt around on your sewing machine just because those feed dogs are going to be in the up position. It'll hit the bottom of your fabric a little bit. Now, if you want to go the next route up, usually that means that other things are included in it, like that extension table, the extra feet, uh, so you don't have to purchase them separately. Those things are nice to have. Um, if you are able to spend a little bit more money, um, being a thousand dollar range, if you want to go up even higher than that, you certainly can. There are machines that are thousands of dollars and they will have embroidery functions. They will have a full like LCD computer screen here where you can select your different stitch settings for what it is you're doing and have a little stylus to select that. If it's an embroidery machine, you literally can plug in a USB port and upload your designs into that. But you don't need all that to get started. You can go with the beginner model and still have a good experience. Now brands, I always recommend when people come into my shop that they go with Baby Lock or Janome. That's because of two reasons. One, we have dealers for Baby Lock and Janome within driving distance of the Quad Cities where we live. Um, I don't make any money off of doing this video tutorial and recommending those brands. They're just the ones that I recommend to people because they can get purchase them locally, they can learn how to use them locally, and then they can get them serviced locally. So those are all important things. Um, and they have good price points depending on what you want. So you can get a basic model that's going to just do what you need it to do and while you're still, you know, learning to quilt. And then if you decide, you know what, I do want to try this embroidery thing. I want to invest in that. Then you can get a model that costs much more money and a lot of your feet might transfer and it'll still work really well for you. Um, so depending on your budget and what you want it to do, you can get, you know, you can spend $500, you can spend a couple thousand dollars. It all depends on what you need, but you don't have to have a salesperson talk you into buying a $3,000 machine when all you want it to do is sew a straight quarter inch stitch. There's something much um, less expensive for you that you can get instead. Because you don't want to be in a situation where like you're too intimidated by your machine to get it to work. Because some of the new machines, I mean, there's full computers in here that make them run and a motherboard and everything. And so if technology is something that you find challenging, you might be better off going with a basic model because then you will be able to just sew and not have to worry about, okay, what stitch setting am I supposed to pick and how do I get to that? And, and I have to pull the manual out every single time I want to choose a stitch. Like that can be really frustrating and that can keep you from sewing because you won't be able to get the right um, stitch setting if that technology is a barrier. So basic models could be good for you for that. Other brands that are good are, of course, FAF is good. Uh, Viking has some really good machines. Handy Quilter has good machines. I mean, there are if you can buy it at a quilt shop or at a sewing machine repair place, it's going to be a good machine. If you can also get that machine at a big box store, it probably isn't the best machine. Um, a good story to explain this, a friend of mine bought a machine at a big box store and she had never cleaned it. So she was at a sit and sew and we're like, you probably should like go get that cleaned out. So she brought it in and they said, look, we can clean it out for you, but quite frankly, it's probably not worth it because these machines are meant to run until they die and then you're supposed to get a new one. And so we can spend the money to clean this, but it's not really going to do that much good in the long run for this machine because it eventually it's going to die. And so you might as well just take that money and save it toward getting a new and better model eventually. So that's a good analogy for why you don't want to buy at a big box store. The other reason why you don't want to buy a big box store is the reasons I said earlier. You can get it locally, you'll have support on how to use that machine, and then you also can service it locally. So the reason why you need a class on using a sewing machine, even if you have used a sewing machine for decades, is if you are upgrading, especially to one of those models that has a full computer system in it, you're going to need a couple of lessons just on how to use that machine. 
how do you, the basic things of course are going to be how to wind the bob and how to thread it. Probably like 95% of all tension problems are because you threaded something wrong or you wound your bobbin wrong. So those are important things to know how to do specifically for your machine. And then also how to use it. If you have a computer screen where you have to like check different buttons and press them with a stylus to get the right stitch setting, it's going to be a lot easier to figure that out if you go attend a one hour class or two hour class with somebody showing you how to do all this stuff than it is to read through like dozens of pages in a manual. The manual is, I can't remember how we did that in class and I just want to get a refresher. It shouldn't be like the first time you do it. So that's great. And then if you forget something, you can call and you can say, hey, look, I'm having trouble setting this stitch setting up. How do I do that again? And they can walk you through it over the phone. So that local support is going to be invaluable to you. And then also local service is huge. If you need to get your machine cleaned out, and you should, if you sew at, at all, you should be getting it cleaned out every six months to a year, depending on how much you sew. Um, I really should be doing it every six months with as much as I sew. And I told you the only time I've ever had problems with my baby locks is when I haven't cleaned it out frequently enough. So that's a really important thing because lint builds up in there and even if you're good about cleaning it out when you change your bobbin, it still gets in crevices that you just can't reach. And so you need to take it in, you need to get it serviced at your um, local sewing machine repair place. So if you have somewhere local, you can drive there, you can drop it off, you can pick it up in a week or so whenever it's done. That is so much better than one, not knowing what to do. Two, sending it to a place that does sewing machine repair, but doesn't know the specifics of your machine and your model, because that's very important. If they sell a baby lock, then they've been trained on how to service that baby lock. You know what I mean? So they're not like, you know, taking in a faff, which yeah, I can take it apart and I can clean it out, but I haven't been trained specifically on how to do that. So it's really important to buy at a place where you can get all that done. I can buy my machine here, I can learn how to use it, and then I can go back and get it cleaned when it needs to be done. A lot of places like that will offer financing deals for you, and they also will offer cleaning packages, which will help you keep that machine running for a long time. So those are all good things to have and why you should buy locally from an independent retailer rather than a big box store, because you're just not gonna get that support. You can't take this to Walmart and be like, hey, I need my sewing machine cleaned, or I don't remember how to wind this bob, and can you show me how? They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. You just can't do it. Sorry, Walmart. I was there yesterday. I bought stuff, but not a sewing machine. Well, I hope that helps if you're considering buying a sewing machine. Um, there's lots of good brands out there. Just find out what you can get locally, what you can get help with when you need it, because seriously, that's so key. And research that. Make sure that the business has been in, in town for a long time because you don't want to buy and then, you know, that place goes out of business and then you can't get your machine serviced unless you go drive an hour and a half because um, that can be a pain. So make sure you have somewhere that's local, that has been in business for a while, that you can go buy that machine from and that you can depend on them for help throughout the life of you owning that machine. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it helped answer some questions. If you're looking to upgrade your machine or also um, just get something new for the first time, I hope this helps. Really, you need something that will sew a quarter inch stitch, either by having a quarter inch foot or a quarter inch stitch setting on your machine. You need a walking foot. The more throat space in here, the better for being able to quilt your quilts at home. Nice extras to have are an extension table, a open toe applique foot, and a free motion quilting foot. It's sometimes called a darning foot as well. And really that's it. That's what you need to quilt. Um, there are lots of other fun things that you can get in a sewing machine that drive the price up a little bit more. But if you just get a model where you can do those basic things, you probably want to spend at least $500 on a machine at a place that specializes in selling machines. Don't go to a big box store. Go to your local retailer where you can get it. You can learn how to use it from the professionals there and they can service and support you as you are going on your sewing machine journey. And again, I'm not making any money on this. I am not, I didn't get anything free from Baby Lock. I um, am not a paid spokesperson or anything. I have just used their machines for eight years. I like them. The only time I've ever had problems has been my fault because I haven't 
uh, cleaned it at the regularity I should have, but there's lots of other great brands out there too. So see what is available close to you, go test drive it at the store, but know when that salesman is trying to talk you up into the more expensive machine that you don't necessarily need all those functions to start off with. Um, I would say if you go with a basic one that will sew your quarter inch stitch and has those basic feet, that's a good starting point. But if you really want to be serious about finishing your quilts at home, then it's probably worth upgrading to the $1,000 to $1,500 price point so that you can have those extras like an extension table and come with all those extra feet that you're going to need uh, to do all that. So I hope that helps and happy quilting.